I am a 45-year-old transgender woman who began her transition about 30 years ago. And here's what I, here's when people ask me about, like, when did you do your transition with her? I've been a trans woman from inception. People like to have the misconception to say, well, people aren't born that way. Well, let me ask you this. When did you know who you were who you are? Hey y'all, this is T.S. Madison coming to you loud, live, and in color at Comedy Hype. If you don't know who I am, honey, you've been sleeping under a rock. I am a author. I am an actor. I am an entertainer. I'm a RuPaul's Drag Race judge. I'm on Beyonce's Renaissance album. I'm dark brown, dark skin, light skin, beige, fluorescent beige, bitch. I'm black. You've quoted me a million times, honey. I'm the internet sensation that took 15 minutes and lasted 15 years. I've been around and longer than some of y'all husbands, bitch. It's T.S. Madison, honey. And if you don't know, now you do. Yamanika! T.S. Madison, my boo. What's up, baby girl? Well, I heard you coming for my crown. Girl, honey, what crown? We all got a crown, honey. We all phenomenal women's. That's us, okay? We just women's on a different spectrum. You know what, Yamanika? Let me tell you something. Personally, I think that a lot of people have a big misconception about me because I'm so vocal about everything that I believe and stand in. And we, black people, do the same shit that white people do and go to mistaking everybody for the same thing. I am not that girl that said that women's periods, women don't own womanhood and all of that other shit. I'm not that girl that said that because I don't even believe in anything like that. I'm the girl that said that there are women, there are so many women who have been mistaken for transgender women that a lot of the displaced anger comes from there. And we need to understand that transphobia affects all women. Now you understood that when I said it, right? No, I understood that. I, but you know, I also know you, you know, and I think we need to just go ahead and just break down everything Let's do it. that has been happening. You know, I've, I've had a chance to talk with you. We, I've never known you not to do anything but support women. You were very supportive to me. Um, I remember when we first met, I was doing a pilot. You came, you reached out, you came with your mother. You guys were just so lovely, so supportive. Where do you think this um, misconception came from that there is a challenge uh, from the trans community towards women, from trans women to- uh, Well, I think for women? me, per se, to be honest with you, and I'm going to be real honest, I'm going to keep it a, a buck here on Comedy Hype. Because we, this is a black space. We all black here. When Kaya and I were doing the Queen's Court together, we were like the dynamic duo. When she and I split, I do think that I got a lot of, not backlash, but I got a lot of transphobia thrown at me because she immediately went over into the space of saying, he stole from me. She immediately began to say, I mi uh, she immediately began to misgender me. She immediately began to, I went from being her sister to homeboy. She immediately went to start doing those things. And I started clapping back at her mother ass because you can't just hit me and then tell me how to hit you back. You can't, as a woman, start calling me all types of things. Now you was just my sister 24 hours ago and not 24 hours later, oh, you a man, you a thief, you a this. I become every pejorative, you know, in the United States of America. And then I start clapping back and saying, you know, you suck my, kiss my, you know, I'm, we hood. These two hood arguing with each other. But now you want to, you want to get behind this thing. And it's just like, oh, well, I'm a woman and you don't need to be saying this type of stuff to me. But bitch, didn't you hit me first? Now, do you think with, uh, first of all, I loved you guys together. I'm gonna be honest, like that, that was my vibe. And I've, I've been in situations where I've worked with other people, sometimes having a friendship come together in workspaces just doesn't work. And then you, there's resentment and things that build up. I think that's a whole other topic. The, the uh, issue of saying he now, right? Was that something that she was doing before? Because no. you, I've always known you to talk about your yeah. did you got I, I mean, listen, right? Yamanika, here's the thing. I stand in my transness. 
I stand in my transness because I know that you, as a biological woman, and I, as a transgender woman, don't have the same experiences in womanhood, period. You are a, nat you are a natural, genetically born, I am a learned woman. And so I understand the differences in between. And I think that lots of times, you know, a women run into a transgender women who whose identity is not the same as mine. Like I don't I, I don't identify as a female. I don't identify as a transgender female. I identify as a transgender woman. I also know that I transition from one one place to another. I also don't want to have an uh an SRS, which is a sexual reassignment surgery, because my completion came here at the top in my brain. I knew who I was. I know who I am. I've always known who I am. Hell, TS is on the beginning of my name, TS Madison. So I've always stood in my transness. And so it always gets me vexed when I hear women, um, you know, like to stand on the soapbox and scream and be like, you will never be you. And I'm like, ma'am, I'm really not trying to be you. I'm trying to be the best version of me. I just happen to wear women's clothing, I wear women's attire, you know, which is basically a social construct. I fall up under my gender identity. Um, and I think that women, biological women, um, have had different run-ins with di different trans women. And, they, and they've also been very aggressive about their disdain. I do think that lots of times there are women out there who feel that trans women's existence happens to impede on their existence and and they feel like that their their spaces are being taken from them because of our existence. I personally feel that at times. Well, you know, it's you know, I'm I'm a big supporter of LGBTQ plus community. And I, you know, we've talked about this. I got a lot of flack because you know I'm a Christian and people are like, how can you be a Christian? And I'm a Christian and, too. And that but I always said that my space is not to be here as a judge. My space is just to give and represent love. And everybody, I believe, should be able to have their own relationship with God and communication. And he will lead your path uh, individually. But one of the things that I do think when you talk about like uh, women getting on a soapbox or women feeling like their space is being impeded, is it because there are trans uh, women, and I'll say women for now because we don't really see this conversation happening with trans men and we will talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But do you think there are representations of trans women that are causing this sort of, you know, with women because, you know, uh, women by and large have always been, you know, except for like maybe Southern Christian conservative white women have always been like, Hey girl, sister girl, you know what I'm saying? Like always been in support of like, yeah, that's my gay boo. That's my sister. You know what I'm saying? We've always been in support. So do you think that some of, some of the people that represent trans women have kind of been contentious as well? To start I will tell argument? you what I think the root of the problem is, Yamanika, because when I first uh, emerged as a woman, you know, my support system was most definitely women and most definitely black women. And it's always been black women. Like my, my whole management team, my whole team behind me is a team of black women and, and just women in general. Um, I think what has happened is we have, um, we have been trying to find inclusive language for us as trans women and trans men. And so when we're trying to find this inclusive language and educate people in, in spaces, like because when you start using, there are terms that women don't like. They don't like the term cis. They don't like the term a chest feeder, bonus hole, birthing. Oh, daddy, that's what, but I just want you, because like, I want you to explain all of those terminologies, but I will tell you something as a woman, all of us, when, we were so inclusive and in fighting for that space. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, now I have to identify as something that I've never had to think about identifying as. And I think that pushed some women to be like, why do I have to say sis? Because to be honest, we have people, even when I say it in conversations, when I talk to you, I said, I, I don't identify as a cisgender woman, but in a conversation when we were talking about biological women and trans women for clarity, Right, I don't think that there is a problem with saying cisgendered women, um, and it's really those sort of terms that are like 
pissing people off and mm -hmm. causing them to, what do you think that is? I mean, what is the problem? Well, the problem is that these are things that they don't understand and they don't really want to understand. And it's, and it's because of, of us trying to find inclusive words and because cis means on the same side of, meaning identify as, because there's cisgender women, there's cisgender men. I have decided to, because I'm a public figure, and I have decided that when I'm occupying platforms like this or any other platform that I'm on, I'm, I'm going to be respectful and just refer to people. If, this, if they don't want to be called cis, I'm not calling you cis. That's just, that's just, that's the way I move. But when I'm having conversations amongst my my peers and we're talking about things where we know that we're not being disrespectful to women when we're trying to differentiate between the two trans women and and cis women if we're having that conversation and I'm not I'm going to say this and I'm not going to say that the people that don't use it are not intellectual but when I'm having intellectual conversations with other people and we're talking about you know women there are cis women and there are trans women when we're having that conversation and it doesn't offend anybody I'll have that conversation but if it's if, if we're going to have a conversation where I see that it's going to be divisive or offensive to somebody I'm not going to use it I'm going to say biological women real women because I'm not I'm not for trying to have division that's not what I'm for but I un I scientifically understand that cis means on the same side of, you know? And so if this is a, if, if women that I'm in communication with or I'm friends with or, or don't want to be called that and you tell me that I won't refer to you as that because I respect you enough not to do that. Um, but what happens is you say where the trans men are in this conversation, this is why we have this because Trans men are also genetically born female, but they don't want to be, they don't want to call if they still have their genitalia. They don't want to call their genitalia vaginas. They don't want to call their, their the, if they had breasts, they don't want to call their breast breast. If they had to breastfeed, they want to say they're chest feeders. This, this terminology is used to represent those people. And oh, so, so now that's I now let's be very clear because I did not know that. Right. You say chest feeders. That was not a, to address biological women. That was for trans men and intersex people. See, see we don't know this kind of conversation, Maddie, because like, and I and I always tell people this. I, these problems, not to say that there aren't problems in LGBTQ plus community, because there are in every community, right? Mm -hmm. But when I don't have these problems with my friends because I understand that, you know, there's a difference between being a, a lesbian, being an AG. Some people don't want you to say dyke anymore. Some people don't mind if you say it. Some people have transitioned. When you are not immersed inside the culture to understand the hierarchy, at what point, what's the middle ground for us to go, there's people that just are not gonna get it and we can't keep saying we are gonna cancel these people because they don't wanna say shit. Or you, you not understanding who I am and I and I need you to see. Well, the me middle ground comes in just, just as I just did today. As I said, if if this offends you and it bothers you, I've decided that in order to be cordial, in order to keep our relationship going, I will not use that in, in conversations with us because this is a, if you find this offensive, I'm not gonna call you a cisgender woman. I'm actually not calling you a cisgender woman anyway, I'm gonna call you by your name, especially if I know you. But if we're if we're in a conversation amongst a room full of people, and this is just the way I work, y'all Monique, and I can't say that, you know, because the way I work, everybody should work like that, but this is the way I work. If I'm, I'm gonna ask, because I'm progressive, I want peace in between us. And you, you've known me for years and you know, I've always been like that. I want peace in between because the, the bigger enemy out there is legislature, which is stripping rights from all of us, trans women and biological women, black women, black trans women, black men, black trans men. They're stripping these rights away from us all. And so when we're on the field, fighting over terminology when we can basically say, hi, what's your name? Where you from? How, how do I address you? Here's what pisses me off. 
when you get to a space like that where people are like, well, if his mama named him, if his mama named him this, I'm gonna call him this. Nah, you you yeah. you're you're willingly going in a space like I don't want to respect you as that because I believe in this. So here's why I tell people that encounter those types of people, don't don't communicate with them. Don't interact. And if they if their willing willingness to disrespect you, leave. I'm not going to occupy any space where there's a person that's going to willingly disrespect me. I'm going to leave. If you don't want my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I don't care what you know or what I've told you is between my legs. I've told you that to address me is she, her, and hers. And and my name is uh, Madison, T.S. Madison, she, her, and hers. If you choose that this is how you don't want to address me, we don't have to have a conversation. We don't have to ha share the same space. I, you know, I'm I'm okay with that. I told you earlier this week, I said, Yamanika, if you're a turf, I'm all right with that. If you're a bigot, I'm all right with that. If you don't like transsexuals, I'm all right with that. If you don't like gay men, I'm okay with that because this is your life and you have the opportunity and the ability to do whatever you want to do in your life. What I don't want you to do is occupy spaces of government where you're making laws and you're making uh, 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 decisions over my body, over, over how I eat, over how I live because of what you believe. I don't want you occupying law enforcement because then I don't know if you're going to protect and serve me or are you going to just serve me. I don't want you uh, uh, occupying spaces of health care and being a, a, a provider because I don't know if you're going to try to harm me because of your beliefs. You understand what I'm saying? You can be exactly who you want to be in this world, however you want to be it. But I just I just don't want you occupying those spaces because then you start making collective decisions on, based on the way on what you believe in. Right. Well, we spend a lot of time making sure um, that we try to protect those spaces. And I think when it came to black women and you and I had a um, you were gracious enough because you most certainly didn't need to do my podcast. honey. You was soaring in the skies. But we talked about, uh, I was very concerned about how many uh, trans, Black trans women were being murdered and how no one was speaking about that. And I wanted to bring you on because that was a very uncomfortable space. And even in, in that space, you know, and I shared my stories of, uh, you know, being abused by men and and you still, and taking that time to still be like, girl, I'll be a nigga ass for you. You know what I'm saying? Like still having that, that sort of protection there. I, I think as a black woman, we go, cause we, I, we see like Jess Hilarious. We see a couple of other people who have, black women who have come out and said, listen, don't say this. And I'm not no birthing tube and I'm not, and who gonna protect us? As a black woman, what I feel is that black women already are at the bottom, right? Like we are the lowest of the, we're not respected, disrespected, undervalued, not appreciated, uh, disproportionately murdered and all kinds of things. I agree. To already be down there and black women feeling like their space is now like, oh, here's another group of people will come in and telling me I ain't shit or I'm not allowed to, feel the way that I feel or express how I like crouching in. I, I really see that as a lot of the problem because you don't see a lot of white women complaining because they have a space in which they get to thrive and be with, with reckless abandon when black women it's, it's well, if black in on women, us, how uh, we can identify and who we can be saw us as women, then they would understand we were on the same feel with, with them. But they, a lot of them don't want to accept that, and you know that's where the that's where the divide comes in, because they immediately like you're a man, and you know you are a man, and this is you get out of here, and it's just like, um, no, I'm not a man. I am born male, but I'm not a man, um, and. I don't know how to really break that down for anyone to really understand that because they would have to just believe it because they, they, that's the problem. Like when I said, I, if someone transitions to me and they, it's like, okay, that obviously 
this person wants you to acknowledge him as a woman or they want you to acknowledge him as a man. I don't see the complication. There are sort of unspoken biases that people are holding on to to also uphold the things that they believe in. Like just the, first of all, let's just address the elephant in the room, which today ain't me. Cause I know the niggas in the comments gonna be like, a oh, bitch, that's you. <laughs> the whole just hilarious thing that there were parts of it I, that I'll be honest you know, I, I don't follow Jess. In the very beginning, when she was some of the stuff about remixing jokes, I, I immediately got off the Jess Hilarious train because I don't operate like that as a comic. Mm -hmm. But over time, just like you have built your brand, she has built her brand. And mm -hmm. she has amassed a large amount of people who like her and support her. So for that, I will give her respect. Now, when she started the conversation, I immediately felt the frustration as a woman going, okay, I see where she's going. Like, why why, why we gotta be this and this and this and that. What turned me was when it became this conversation of you have a delusion or a mental problem because then that seemed like that was another, a different type of bias that was coming in. And it was a way in which the society has reduced black people as well. You understand? Like we were told that we were violent and it was in our nature. We that we have a limited capacity to think. And those were narratives that move forward, which caused violence and stereotyping towards black people. And so when I heard that, it became like a whistle for me to be like, oh my God, is she saying that that's yes. a mental disorder? And, and that's where I, she lost me with that too, like not, cause I'm, I, it became, now we're all mentally insane and we're, we're, you know, and who's gonna protect us from y'all crazy people. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's what it started to sound like. Who's gonna t protect us from y'all crazy people? And I'm like, now nah, girl, first of all, here's the biggest problem, Yamanika. The clip that was posted was taken completely out of context. Yes. Blessing Rose, was talking about womanhood and the aspect of trans men and intersex people. And it brings me back to at the top of the conversation where I said this language wasn't even about biological women or genetic women. This had nothing to do with biological um, women that identify as God, I don't want to say the word sis because I, I just I'm trying to get away from it. I'm trying to get away from it, but this had nothing to do with cisgender women. It was about trans men and intersex people. So well, it was- it, you gotta also call shenanigans on the internet because this happens to me a lot and I know it happens to you a lot. It sound bites is something that you said. They don't share the whole context of it. They put this little piece in and everybody's like, oh, I heard this and I gotta be canceled. Because I mean, immediately when I saw that piece, I was like, I know that this person in lost their mind and they've been complaining about periods. Don't know woman with no period. Nigga, you can have my period. Where do I send it? Whose PO box do I send it to? It is a problem. Yes. To know I that it's a larger portion of a conversation, which I think also that just didn't know that it was a larger portion of conversation and was addressing that. And I, I addressed it too. like it's, Because I get in a space, Yamanika, where I see things like that. And I'm like, what in the f is they doing this for now, we was just fine. We were all just fine yesterday. So why is this coming out? Like, why, 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 why is it all of a sudden this? Like, what the, why are you, they starting this about some damn periods? Like, what the hell? And then I took the time to go and, and see it. And I'm like, oh. Because I was immediately on, on, on the side of, now how does females don't have periods? How does that, how does, how are we going to work this out? How are we going to work this shit out now? Like, tell me, because I'm 45 years old. Uh, Yamanika. So I'm still in the learning stage of learning terminology, learning this and learning what it is, what, what it is for. Then I'm like, oh, it was for this. Okay. So yeah, they, they took it out of context. So Daddy, you know. I'm right behind you. We come from, listen, what's happening now and all this cancel culture and all this other stuff. You know, we grew up in the eighties. They barely yeah. took care of us kids. You understand? Like these kids now, they want protection. Listen, in, in the eighties, they didn't care nothing about you. Okay. They didn't protect us against nothing. Not even pedophiles. If you got molested, you just got got. Wow. So these kids don't even understand that because they everybody protecting them and all this stuff. So I there is a part, and I even in the comments, even the people that hate on me, I understand them in the comments where it's like, damn, 
we, while everything is changing, I'm in the middle of life and I've already had this amount of time to be this. And now I got to go and figure out how to make you comfortable while at the same time, not even really being comfortable myself. And I see all this weird dissension that's happening when it should be love. Because yeah. I be having a good time. I be having love. Next, and then next thing you know, here come a word and they like, oh, I, I I promise you, y'all, I gas every time it's something. I'm like, oh God, oh, like oh. But what I do because we, you and I both are people that are progressive people. There are people that just stuck. Like I, I ain't moving for that. I don't want to do, you know. And that's I don't want to see him on TV, sounding like some white. I don't want to see him on TV. I don't want him around my kids. I don't want this. They all they they delusional. They they got mental problems. Who's going to protect us from those deviants over there? When those deviants are people that are human beings that are just trying to exist in the world that was given to all of us, not just you. And so being that the world was not given to just, just you and all of us have to exist in it, you know, we find ways, we try to find ways to coexist in this world. You know, there's nothing that a woman has that I want. I don't, I, again, I'm going to say this. I don't want your, I don't want your periods. Hell, if you can have kids, have as many as you like. Bless your heart. I don't want, I don't even want children, but I just want to exist as who I am. I am comfortable with me being a transgender woman. I've always identified as a transgender woman. And I also understand where black women stand on feeling like that they're not protected. They're not this hell because they're not, but we are not the enemy. I think that's very true. When, when um, you and I were gabbing, I said, we went into the part about um, there was a lot of memes going around uh, with Jess and side by side how she was a man and things like that. And that that really did irk me in a, in a way because I felt like more than a trans thing. And you and I spoke about this, that it, that started from white supremacy, this yeah. idea that because white women have to be the epitome of beauty and black Black women are the antithesis to that, just in body structure, skin complexion, all of those features as well. We are the opposite, polar opposite to them, that they, there had to be a, a degrading in, in Black women and masculine and saying we are masculine and we are not beautiful and we're not worthy of being treated in feminine spaces. So for me, when I saw all these things comparing just to a man, I was like, but like, why are we doing that? Well, here's the thing. I never said that Jess looked like a man. And I never said that Jess was a man. What I said was that Jess Hilarious, um, from her own words, has been misgendered. And from her own experiences, this is not her first time that she's been misgendered or someone has some man has thought that she was a man. I, I didn't say that she looked like a man. I said, I don't think that she looks like a man, but I do feel that, that she has a lot of alpha energy. She has alpha energy, you know? That does not mean because you possess alpha energy that you are um, a man. You just are a leader. You're just, you, you fall on this, the construct of, you know, what's to lead or what's strong, you know? My thing is, Sometimes women have been, or lots of women, and this is the truth, Yamanika, you and I both can speak to the, speak truth to this. There are lots of women who have been called transgenders or have been called a man. Oh, and me it, all the time. All and, the and, time they call me a man. And it's, and, 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 but what you haven't done is let that build up any aggression in you because there are some that be like, now... And I'm just giving an example, and, and maybe people out there going to be in the comments talking, but whatever. I live this every day. Now I have to prove myself as a real mother woman, and this thing is over here, it up for all of us because, you know, because here's the gag. If you throw some of these, some of these real women <laughs> up in there in the group with all of us, hell, it's going to be hard to do the picking. <laughs> but that's also a testament to how unclockable some people are because some some people i mean listen we watched people in the 80s people wasn't transitioning the way they transitioning now because you ain't had all that shit you ain't had but here but, but yamanika let's be real here's the thing every woman ain't beautiful 
It's some ugly trans women. It's some ugly trans. It's ugly. It's unattractive. Let me not say ugly. It's some unattractive trans women. It's some unattractive women. There are women that have this feature. There are women that have that feature. There are women. So if you throw us all in the pot, in the pot, there are some of us that look like some of y'all. And so then you have you. We already know that the ones that are that are going on the side of doing all the BBLs, the surgeries, doing all this. Everybody's doing this stuff, or whatever. So men are over there like you ain't no trans, is you? And the first thing, hell no, I ain't no mother man, y'all. I've seen it with my eyes. I don't give a fuck who gets in the comment section and try to get 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 hype. I've seen it with my eyes. I've been with women where men have clocked me and then done told the women like, oh, all y'all men. No, bitch, I ain't no man. I got a real motherfucking. I'm a real bitch. I can have a baby. I don't that. I've experienced this. There are women that have experienced that. And so you can't go on your on, on your in these spaces and talk about, nah, that ain't that ain't true. That's true. You yourself are sitting here saying that you've been called this or whatever. And so it just spoke truth to power in what I said. It's just that some have built up aggression, like, okay, I'm sick of this. Shit. I'm sick of y'all. Now I got to explain what I am when God gave me who I am and who I am. And now I got to be right here explaining. Yes, you feel some type of way. My manager is a, is a tall woman that has alpha energy. She's all woman. You hear me? All woman. But she has alpha energy. And she says, Madison, yes, there are times. She says, I have big hands. I have big feet. Men have been like, you ain't no dude, is you? You ain't no man, is you? You ain't no tranny or no trans. But we can't say that word. But you ain't no tranny, you know. And it's like, I, so I get it. But there are some that are plot that that ha, is so angry with that. Like I'm over it. Like it's if something is hitting you with something so much, so many times, you like, I'm over this. Shit. I'm sick of them. So don't act like what I'm not you, Yamanika. I'm talking to the audience. So don't act like what I'm saying is not true, or don't act like what I'm saying is not. It's impossible me saying that, you know, this happens because this does happen. And there are women that are exhausted with that because it's just like, just get out of our space. Right, right. But it does. Ha and it, and again, I, I just, you know, I always get labeled for hating black men because I, I because as a woman, I have to bring up certain topics. But um, one of the things um, that I think is crazy is it does happen. I know when they say it to me that they're saying it as a put down and as an insult. And some women, they are really saying it because they think that this might be a, 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 a man who has transitioned to be a woman. Have you had a chance to engage with Jet, have a conversation, a sit down or anything to just kind of like bring these like sis this is what I was saying and like because you know I've been told that she you know is a supporter of the LGBTQ plus community um, um you know uh, you think she would sit down yeah. with you and here's why I did it here's why my post made her it react to me first because she and I have had good rapport with each other she's told me that I was her favorite you know, that she's loved me and this and the other. And, you know, I've liked her too. I've liked a lot of stuff. I've loved her too. So that's why I'm like, damn. When she's made that blanket statement, I was like, damn, like, fuck, you know. And I've always inboxed her with things when I felt like something was like out of whack, you know. But I'm like, damn, you done came to the public and said this. So I just made that statement. I did. And I made that statement because it gave like... I'm I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this stuff. Like I'm tired of all of this stuff. Like who's gonna who? It was just a call out to who's gonna protect us from them crazy people. You're calling out to these men, like girl, these men been these men are what's calling you a fucking man, right? And not protecting you, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, there are um, because DJ Academics came the next day. I was like, see? I, what I thought was unfortunate was a lot of the men um, who who have said disparaging things about Jess Hilarious or who have not been a supporter of hers, all of a sudden now she gets this uptick of people who, it, 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 
it's something you want as a performer to have people come to you, but it's almost like disingenuous because it's like, now that she's saying something that you think she's agreeing with you on, now you're ready to come and have her back, which is sort of a shaky ground because if at any moment you guys reconcile or have a conversation or come back to a place of understanding, then these people are going to abandon her again. Well, here's the thing, Yamanika. It wasn't about them really in deeply support of her per se. It was about her speaking out. And, and, and the thing about it is we're living in a time now where you get canceled for being homophobic and transphobic. You lose, you're losing your job. You're losing your thing. And I'm going to say it just as raw as I know how to say it. I don't know how to be political correct with this. We've, we've been through society where society has been able to call us dykes, trannies, homosexual punk bitches that's going to die of AIDS and just go right back to work like it's nothing. Now, because we are in society and we are, we are a part of... Uh, of of making the world go around, you just can't do that. You can't up and insult me. You can't up and read me to the floor. You can't up and do that and 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 think that you're gonna just walk proudly. It's the same way with racism. You can't up and go in there and say nigger, 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 nigger. You can't up and go doing that. And now everybody's like, oh, cancel woke culture. It's the same. If, if, you, if you can look at it through that lens, then you can understand. Now it's just like, I, I don't got no problem with them, but I just don't want them being able to get no health care. Because that's right. what you're saying. It's a, subtle, it's a subtlety. It's a subtlety. But we, but we also like, we're in a weird space. You know, we got the millennials and these Gen Z behind us. We got the boomers in front of us. We're Gen Xers. It is because like I can't speak for Jess because I don't know her like that. Um, and I, I can only speak to her comedy and I'm a comedian and I know we like to bring levity to, to comedy. And sometimes, you know, with comedy, it's, we just saying shit and then it's, we processing it, but it's really like no harm. Like, you know, there was a lot of controversy with Chappelle and mm. I've been around Chappelle and I know like he got love for so many people. It's not, any to, to me, it's like I don't see any transgender hate with him. Do, do you think a lot of that started with him doing stand up or with um, he's a man, and um, it's different when men speak about transgender women with things because 99.9% of the time, the black men are killing the transgender women, and when you start eating, eating us, we're becoming it. And you, and you keep us in a in a space of of not being human. You you f anything up that's not human, because wh why would I care about it? It's not even real. It's not even a thing. Like, wh why do they need anything? Why do why why do we care about that? Who gives a f about those people? Those 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 aren't real people. Those are those over there. So there was a few things in his comedy uh, uh, special that I, I listened to. Now. I'm not easily offended by stuff, and I'm a, I'm a street bitch, and I've been learning how to box from the from the from the times of, of the beyond. So it's there. There are things that I'm not. I'm, I'm I have Teflon skin, so there are things that are not gonna offend me like it may offend other people. But I'm not gonna take away those the girls that were offended by Dave Chappelle's argue, conversation and and his jokes and 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 leaning it back on. Oh, this is comedy, you know. But what I will say is that as a man who speaks to a mass audience of men, when we become it's and things like that, it just further adds to, oh, everybody care about that? Who, who cares about shit like that? They don't matter. And you gotta understand, just like me occupying these spaces, I understand my position and you know where my voice lands. And so I'm a little bit more cautious. I'm still gonna talk about my mother genitalia because that's mine but I'm also going to direct it in the space of I don't speak for all people you know what I'm saying does it make you um and I, I want to ask I've never asked you this but I, I really want to know from you with people like you know I've broken bread with Chappelle I think he's a genuine person and I know you have other friends who like support him does it feel like we're not supporting you because we have these appreciations and connections to him? 
it kind of hurts at times when you when you know the ones that you love like love to the floor you like damn you don't see how this like the, like do you really f with me you know what i'm saying you can't pull your boy to the side you know what i'm saying you can't pull your folks to the side and be like bro you know not the way that, not to it's going to change their beliefs or how they feel but it's just like now nah, i don't stand with that part of it you know what i'm saying he funny or they funny but I don't, I don't stand with that, that, that piece of that situation right there because, you know, just like Pierre and I are really good friends. And Pierre says things sometimes that I'd be like, I may call him on the phone, nigga. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, I be calling that nigga. Nigga. You know, don't, don't you say that kind of mother... You know what I'm saying? But it's also what he believes. But, it's, but he also respects me. You know what I'm saying? And we got that type of relationship where I can call him on the phone and say X, Y, and Z. But I also tell people all the time, like I tell you, I tell Pierre, I tell any of my my straight friends, I say, listen, I'm an I'm an anomaly. I get it. And I'm from a time before the new times. So there are things that may not that may f me up. I mean that may f them up, they may not f me up. I'm good on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell, sometimes I'd be like, yeah, nigga. Cause it's like a bitch tried to put my name out there the other day. Like, nigga, I done told y'all my name was Timothy. That you ain't did nothing. I've, I've documented my whole life in front of y'all, like on the internet, bitch. Y'all, a lot of y'all see me at the door naked. So, come on, shawty. Like you, y'all don't, you ain't really doing nothing by jabbing me like that. So when I go, when I go and uppercut you with a jab, don't all of a sudden become a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Like when you hit me below, when you kick me in the nuts, and I turn around and kick you in your nuts, don't all of a sudden be like. <clears throat> I'm a woman now. I should be respected. Nah. If you hit me first and we go low, I ain't going to, I don't give a f about you being no, no female. If you hit that the same, that would takes me back to Kaya. I was wearing her ass out. And it was another two other bitches that I wore out that I'm not going to give them no, no type of uptick on this, you know, talking about them. But, you know, they were, they've been jabbing at me. You do this and the other. So, of course, I called them. Them hoes look like niggas. So, bitch, you, you, bitch, you look like a whole nigga. So, how, which one would that put us both in the room? No, you're going to have to open your legs. And, bitch, when you open your legs, girl, we will hope you close them. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to jab you. You ain't right. going to just oh, be jabbing can, yeah, me. Jab, absolutely. You're not going to just be jabbing me and now all of a sudden I got to respect you because you a, you a real woman and I need to respect. And see, that's that's the that's what's going on now. A lot of women feel like I should be able to just call a transsexual, a transgender woman, a man, and this and the other, and she don't supposed to turn around and wear me out. Like, she don't supposed to be like, because obviously if we're presenting what we're presenting, we're not walking in men. We're not, we're not, we're not presenting as men. So if you, I take that as a jab. So I jab your ass back. I'm going to hit you with her. I'm going to hit you in your I'm going to hit you in your titties. I'm going to hit you with your kids. I'm going to hit you with that because, bitch, you hit me. So what's up? So when we go, uh, like, listen, Maddie, you know I don't be sparring with you like that. You know, <laughs> you get, but you know I'm quick, too. But I be Oh, you real quick. You, listen, I love you. One thing that just drew me into you that you know how to gut punch. But we ain't on that space because... We love each other. We respect each other. It be the ones that be trying to gut punch me. That I'm like, oh, okay, shouty. And then when I start gut punching them till they down on their knees, then it's all of a sudden, you shouldn't be talking to no woman like that. That's a woman. Nah. Yeah, and that's the point. Like, Because this brings me to my next uh, uh, a point that I want to make. When you are going with back as a woman, and, and you are trans as a woman, right? Listen, we on the same thing. We going back and forth, sis. I see you see me, sister, sis. Does that also bleed into the, sp the space where people are like, why are trans women joining different sports events where they're beating women and it's displaced and all of that? Like, is that the same thing? Here's my thing, Yamanika. The sports conversation, y'all probably gonna have to get a bitch that's into sports because... <laughs> I can't answer none of that. I think anybody, any mother out there that's, that's running and jousting. Wait a minute. I like the joust. I like jousting. I like the joust. <laughs> but they get to run in and then you... No, no, no. That's your version of jousting. My version of jousting, is it looks a little bit different. <laughs> what is it? Just the... A... <laughs> <laughs>
I like to joust like that. But <laughs> I, those people that's into sports and stuff like that, I'd be like, listen, that's y'all thing. I don't, I'm not, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't, bitch, I'm lazy. I don't even like to run. You see I'm fat. I don't even like to run. So You're so, not fat. You are shapely. I'm shapely, but I need to be in shape. But, you know. I don't even get into that sports topic because I don't really anything that I don't understand or I don't really that doesn't have like a, a a thing to me. I don't really like to talk on that because that don't really it's don't it don't affect me. And I think that people need to speak to people who are in that space. I can't speak on that. I don't. I'm not, I'm not educated enough to speak on that like the sports part because I'm like why the f do y'all want to be out there playing sports anymore? Like, <laughs> any of you niggas what y'all niggas want to be out there playing sports any fucking way you know now, now the bat. let's talk about the bathroom now if you ask me that about the bathroom then i can have because i can speak to that because this is what i do well let's talk about it um do you really want this in the bathroom with a man with real niggas what about women who are saying I feel uncomfortable and, and no, do it, do like, it, young niggas. When people are uncomfortable, and I'll be transparent, I had a riff with a friend of mine over the bathroom conversation, and it really didn't even come from me. I don't care who goes to the bathroom. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into the men's bathroom to find a stall because the line is shorter. I'm me done. too. That's the type of bitch I am. Okay. Me too. But, for those women who are not, and you know, I'm a theater kid. We're used to getting undressed in front of people. I, I'll be on set with no clothes. I have time. People are like, why is she just walking around with a bra and panties on? I, I don't care. My body is fine. So I'm cool. You're cool. But do we give any space to the women who just feel terrified and uncomfortable? Not, not about Maddie, but some of the things that they've been taught, like there's going to be some guy that's just going to come in and say that, you know, they had a situation at a, at a spa and a guy was, uh, was he said he was identifying as a woman. And was he it out? Full penis, balls, everything. And women were just like, yeah. I'm in here naked um, in this guy. And it was a whole big thing. Yeah, some of them do. Like, we're not all innocent. I'm not going to sit up here some like that. We take all, advantage we of what all I'm saying. Or do innocent. you? Some of, some of us, uh, but, but, but when we look at the, uh, the percentage of us that are, compared to what's being displayed it's 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 not on the same level um i'm okay with an all genders bathroom i'm all right with, i'm all right with an all genders bathroom because when i got the let me take I'm, I'm gonna give you this story so maybe this will sum it up for you from me okay. we were getting off the plane um just recently to, uh, to land in la and the uh women's bathroom was closed uh no, the women's bathroom line was long. The men's bathroom was closed. And the all genders bathroom was right there. Do you know that when I walked and I was like, I'm going to get in the women's bathroom line. I'm looking at how long the line is. And I'm like, there's nobody going in the all genders bathroom. I walked right in there, peed and came out. Do you know that after I did that, it began to make people go into the bathroom after that? Because I think they just that it's just the bathroom. It just had all genders on the door. But it's a toilet, and it was a single toilet, a single stall. Go in there and pee, bitch, and come out. <laughs> That's just what it is. Now I'm not gonna act like that. They're like that. I don't hear women's concerns when they're saying, um, "Oh, I don't want to be in there with a trans." But the, but 99.9 percent .9 of the time, you probably encountered a bathroom with the trans person. You just didn't know. You know, I've used the bathroom with so many women like going, I'm just going there to pee and come out. Like, but that's me, you know. But the media has pushed this thing again, which is propaganda and fear mongering, pushed that we're in, we're going in the bathroom looking for children. Bitch, when I go in the bathroom, I'm looking for a stall. <laughs> a stall. And when I close the stall door, I want to either sit down or stand up, whichever way I choose to pee. And if that bitch too busy, I'm going to walk over there in the niggas bathroom. If it, Now, I'm not going to do it. If it's a bunch of men in the bathroom, I'm not doing it. I'm For not your doing it. safety, that. though, right? Also, because. For my safety, yes. Because a man will, a man will fuck a bitch. And regardless to what, what a lot of women may think, a man will fuck a bitch. Trust me, and I ain't going in no bathroom in there. Cause anytime, first of all, let's get this, let's get this shit clear. You hoes don't hurt my feelings when y'all be talking about something. I look like a man, and I, that don't that that don't bother me at 
at all because I have tipped in the men's bathroom and the men were like, ma'am, you're in the wrong spot. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I just needed to pee. Yes. Come on now, Maddie. You don't look like no fucking man. Them titties. It's okay. Man. But y'all, nigga, it's okay. I let them get joy out of that. Because if they got to sit around all day, 24-7, screaming out, uh, that you a man? You, you look, you just a man? You just, that don't do, that doesn't, that don't break my shell. I'm com comfortable in my skin. I love myself, goddamn. Bitch, I am extremely cozy. And so, you know, I've put it to the test. I've tiptoed to the men's bathroom and it's been like, ma'am, you're in the wrong space. Ma'am, you're in, you're out of the wrong space. You're, you're not, you're not supposed to be in here. It looks crazy. It looks crazy. It looks crazy. Is that because we don't have an understanding of the difference between sex and gender? Yes. Like it's, it's it's not and it, and it's not just that we don't have an understanding of a yamanika. It's we we don't want to understand it. Why you know, is that? Well, it's because it's something new. I don't want to learn it. I'm not. I don't want my children. I'm protecting my children from that. Religion has been the biggest downfall of the black community. Religion again. I didn't say relationship with God or relationship with the higher power. Religion in the institution thereof, because religion has taught us that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for uh, gay people, and and that's not the case. Read your Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed from gay people. If you ask anybody why they don't like gays, some a, t a lot of times they'll tell you, "I don't like. I hate what God hates," and it's been built up that God hates and gays and anything outside of of hetero god hates it and that's not true i think it's also a lack of uh empathy and compassion listen i've had some of my biggest brawls have been with trans women we get down you know and but at the same time where my empathy as a woman especially a black woman who knows what it feels like to be alone or isolated ostracized i don't want that feeling for anyone that's why i felt so protective of the black trans women who were being murdered and nobody was talking about it they I don't mean, a lot of black women you know why murdered, i'm gonna tell a you a lot of trans black women are being murdered when you can take the human from something again it's speaking to what i said earlier when you can remove human from it it's nothing we're not even human and so the, the, the first thing that'll be said, y'all shouldn't have been tricking them in. You find a way to justify, y'all shouldn't have been tricking them in. And I always ask this question on every show I go on. Every time somebody tells me, oh, I could tell what you is, I know what you is. I could tell by your hands, your feet, your arms, your back, your ears, your tongue, your eyelashes, your, your I could just tell by the strands of your hair, I know what you is. So if something happens to one of us, how in the do you always take the nigger side who's saying, I didn't know, when none of y'all can be fooled? You got to make it make sense. Y'all hoes be walking contradictions with that shit to me. Walking contradictions. I could tell, I know. Well, how when something happened and this nigga over here done told you he didn't know, and we telling y'all, this man was trying, was seeking us out. And there are men that seek, I don't understand why we don't act like there's men out here who love women who have penises still. There are men out here that are on it, like you can't, and it always bothers me when men get very aggressive about it, because then I go, what is, what is the problem? Why are you so agitated by a space that you don't have to live in unless you don't want people to know that Really, maybe it's like, that's bro, where what's, you want what's, to live. what's the tea? Like, nobody's even some, and a lot, a lot of you men flatter yourselves. Nobody don't be looking at y'all. The bitches that's with y'all don't want you. Make I mean, me like I do. It's it's a you know for me when when all black women get categorized as thoughts and this and that because some girl up there shaking her booty and doing this other stuff, we instantly go to um, the woman and go stop doing that because you're making us all look like this and that. And then I'm like, well, we don't like like let her have fun. But what do you say to the uh, trans women that promote like being scammers and like I didn't tell that nigga sh and I did it. Like, do you, is there a conversation you need to have with them or they just need to I, I do. Every time I see it, I always, I always ask them, 
to take themselves outside of themselves and see the bigger picture. We are this big to this. We are this big to this. And by you doing this and publicly saying that this is something that you do, when something happens to us, there is no care. You've also added to the conversation of them dehumanizing us because you've given them a reason to be like, well, that's what y'all get. And I, I and, and listen, I just met Kevin Gates at the BE, at the house of BET. Kevin Gates hugged me and shook my hand. There was a, uh, and Kevin Gates don't let nobody touch him, girl. Nobody. And he was like, he, I do like Kevin Gates. He says, you got good energy. But there was a trans woman that went on a podcast and she was talking about how, which I didn't believe, but she was talking about how he was, how she had an encounter with him and she's like, and, and, and she was white. And that experience is different from our experience. Oh my God, like he was, he was um, going, um, me and he would go down on me. And, um, you know, um, when, when he was going down on me, he's like, wait a minute, is this not, is this not real? Is this, are you trans? He's like, oh yeah, I'm trans. I didn't tell him to in the moment. I was furious. Furious. Because one, now what you're doing is you're weaponizing yourself being trans now on the on a podcast that black people going to pick up because this is black Kevin Gates bitch. You're weaponizing you being trans and now you're saying like oh I'm trans he didn't know and I didn't tell him to the moment. Like why are you falling deep into the stigma and the stereotype? Why are you even and you are white you're a white woman. But there's a lot of entitlement that I think is also... Sister, I got to come down. I got to come back. I know. I know. But it's entitlement. You're a white trans woman doing this. And who's going to get the blunt end of the stick from this? Right. Black trans women. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 Is there a space where, because this also opens up to like, you know, there's so much controversy going on right now with like Lizzo and her oh. perception and all this other stuff. Like, do you feel like that? Like, I always feel like they expect so much from whatever is not traditional uh, woman. Like you're supposed to have this sort of grace and be this and be that. And if you don't, if you have any human expression, then people just tear you down. Like, what is your... He, here's my take with the Lizzo with Lizzo. stuff. Um, again, there are things that that the blogs and the media put out to sensationalize something until all the factual evidence is laid down in front of me. Like when I hear from Lizzo saying S, Y, Z, and I see how this stuff works out, then I'll be able to make my assessment on it. But until then, I'm just looking. And I think what we do as people is we jump forward from the small clips and the little things, and we start making an assumption. Oh yeah, just like with me. Oh, Madison said that women that they don't own womanhood. No, Madison didn't say that. Oh, Madison said that Jess Hilarious looked like a man. No, Madison didn't say that. No, she didn't. Oh, when that when that girl was over there talking about she was police, she was saying that womanhood that had nothing to do with biological with with cis identified women. It had nothing to do with that. Nothing. It, it was about the identity of, of, of how trans men and intersex people have periods, too, and they don't identify as women. I think um, what you, you, you've shared so much with us today, and I think you've opened up a lot of eyes to people that want to listen. And I think the thing that I, I really take home and... Uh, it really touched me is I don't want you to feel like when I'm your friend, nobody oh, I know. comments, whatever, they don't owe you whatever, right? Sister, Probably I don't give a fuck about them people. But and I know, know because you've proven, you've proven time and time, just like I've proven time and time. Like we friends, like, you know what I'm saying? And I I when I first did your podcast, the first thing I opened with was my girl, I got my and I'm gonna keep it. And we laughed and had a good time. And you knew where I stood on a whole bunch of stuff. I also lead in with, 
I'm not the voice of every trans woman. I'm the voice of T.S. Madison, and I do stand up for my folks. Everything that I say may not be right, or everything that I do may not be right, but I'm definitely going to stand on, on the side of right. And I also, when you shared that story with me the other day about how you as a black woman um, was, was about to be attacked at the comedy club, and that the other woman you was with was about to be attacked at the comedy club and they was trying to make that nigga steal by a man and they was trying to make him steal. I was telling you, girl, we'd have been over there swinging on him. Yes. Yes. And I know it. I know you would have. <laughs> we'd have been over there tearing his ass, beating him down because I understand because I also receive a lot of the same things. Even though I am a trans woman, I receive a lot of the same shit. That black women receive too, just in my in my experience. I'm I've still been told that a white bitch is better than me. Uh, hello, I've still been told that a white a white trans woman is better than me and realer than me and no more more passable than me and so much more and so much the upper echelon than me. I have been told this by a black man. Okay, I also have been beat up by black men. I also had to do these things, and I'm not blaming black men because, because in the same token, I've also been protected by those men. I've also have built my empire when I was in the adult entertainment industry. I built my entire empire off of that. So, you know, but I, I'm this whatever experience you can tell me that you've had with the man, I've also had it as a black trans woman. You understand what I'm saying? So. If we can get to a common ground where we understand that we have some shared experiences, and I want to say this loud, we black trans women have shared experiences, but we don't have the same lived experience. I don't have the same lived experience as you, Yamanika, because of course I don't, I don't ovulate, I don't menstruate, and I don't have a wound to carry a baby. So that's a lived experience that I know that I will never have. And a uh, and majority of us living that our trans people know that these are experiences that we know that we will never have. But we do have shared experiences. I just wish people take that away. That's, the, that's all I want them to take away from this conversation. I think people will take away uh, how genuine you are. <laughs> I really do. And that throughout this conversation, it hasn't been a one sided. You have such a broad perspective and that's from living life. And I think a lot of people just need to live and love. And we do, we do have a lot of, I, we felt the same pain and you have been so supportive. And I, you know, listen, I'm, <laughs> In, a, in my dream world, you and Kaya will find a place. And be like, <laughs> Listen, dream I world. wish the best for her. But if that bitch come, they come in my neck, I'm coming at that bitch neck. I don't give a I damn who get in the comments. Uh, no, but I'm just saying in my dream world. And in my dream world, I hope that you and uh, uh, Jess get a car. Because I know these conversations. Anytime I have a conversation and I'm not certain or I don't understand and I can come to you and have a safe space where I know I'm not being judged. But Maddie, just tell me what it is. And I do this with all my friends in LGBTQ+. If we're honest about the Black community, no, I understand when Black men think that everybody's trying to emasculate us, everybody's trying to do this, but also understand that there are spaces in where we also need that protection from Black men to understand us because you have so much love for Black men as much as for Black women. And there are times when you are telling me, listen, I have been protected. And you remind me, yeah, as much as I have problems in the way that I've been received, there are so many good Black yes. brothers in my corner that I love and I respect and I appreciate and I get to have love with. And nobody's coming for anybody's crown. My right. alphaness is not coming for a man's masculinity right wanting to have your femininity and be identified as a woman that you know that you are is not coming for any woman's womanhood and it should just be in love and we should just listen to each other and talk to each other and if you can't get on board with it and you just can't see the way then just step to the side because we're not trying to run you over right. we're just also trying to be seen like you were trying to be seen and coexist I love you, Yamanika, to the floor. I, I love you. And when you get to, when you come down here to Atlanta, come out to the house, eat, chill with the dog. We're going to go out. We're going to go to the straight and the gay club girl and turn up in both yes. of the bitches. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait to give your mama a hug. And just being in your presence is 
such a wonderful, you are so sweet and loving and kind. And I want that to come through. When I called you, I told you, it wasn't about us having to sit down. It was like, Maddie, I love you. And I'm sorry that what whoever is not seeing who you really are is not seeing who you really are. Because I get that a lot too. People don't get to see the sweet, soft side of me because we present. And when we have to talk on issues and things, it has to be what we're talking about. But there's- yeah. There's and if they don't, and if they don't see it, I, think I don't need them. I just like I said, you ain't, they ain't got to be in my space. Yeah, if you don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with you. But if you fuck with me, I fuck with you the long way, baby. <laughs> I don't think it could be said any other way. Thank you so much, my love, for being with us. I love you. I be love blessed. you too. Where can people come see you, Maddie? Uh, listen, make sure y'all follow me on Instagram at T at T S Madison on Twitter at T S Madison. On Facebook at T.S. Madison, honey, you can find me everywhere. It's just T.S. Madison, honey. T.S. Madison, that means transsexual Madison. For all y'all that's confused, that's talking about something that I just wish y'all was standing. I'm always standing in mind, bitch. And make sure you're streaming codes, y'all, for Beyonce album. Thank you. ching a ling 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 <laughs> Yeah, ching a ling 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 Go support T.S. Madison. I'm Yamanika Saunders for Comedy Heights.